So in the previous video, we looked at a summary of eukaryotic gene regulation by going over some basic background topics in terms of the complexity associated with eukaryotes. We're going to continue focusing on that complexity by looking at one of the reasons why gene expression is highly regulated and thus highly controlled in us as eukaryotes. And this is going to be entitled in this next flowchart, Eukaryotic Gene Regulation 2. So we're going to write eukaryotic, and I'll just write GR for gene regulation, Roman numeral 2. And the subtitle for this flowchart is going to be chromosome structure. This is going to be the type of control that we're going to be focusing on for the duration of this flowchart. So it's going to be called chromosome structure, and this is again all about eukaryotic gene regulation. So what is chromosome structure? How can we define it, and what is it based off of? The chromosome structure is a big sort of idea in terms of how we package DNA. So we're going to entitle this subpart to this flowchart DNA packaging. So when we have DNA, DNA is in a great sort of Watson and Crick model form that we've established, but it's also going to be sort of elaborated on. We're going to have DNA found in several different forms in order to promote its sort of storage and make sure that it's stored in a correct and easily accessible or sometimes inaccessible manner, which we'll get to. So DNA can be packaged in the form of chromatin. This is something we've heard of before during cell division. Chromatin is simply the construction of DNA and some other sort of uh, proteins that are going to be a part of this chromatin structure. This is going to mainly be seen usually in cells that are within interphase, and that's cells that are going not undergoing any sort of mitotic division. You could say that the normal DNA packaging state is of chromatin. Chromatin can then be further sort of packaged into what we consider a nucleosome. Another term we've already established before, but it's worth repeating because now we have DNA in its chromatin sort of structure, but this time that structure is going to be wrapped around a histone protein, a specific protein called a histone protein. So it's wrapped around histone proteins. That gives us a nucleosome, and this is also going to be referred to as a bead-like structure. So these are DNA beads of sorts. And we can take those beads and further sort of develop our packaging of DNA by talking about linker DNA. Linker DNA is a form, sort of a way that we can further package DNA because what we're going to do is we're going to have those beads that we just established in the nucleosome and fold them. We fold the beads on a string of sorts, sort of a uh, metaphoric string. And this is going to form into a fiber, a metaphoric, metaphoric uh, fiber. And then we're going to have fiber loops. So you can see that we, we're continuously adding complexity to this DNA packaging structure. Fiber loops have now formed. And then we're going to, we can even attach these fiber loops to um, scaffold proteins, attaches to, let's say, they're called scaffold proteins. A lot of these are very small details that are a big part of a larger picture. And that larger picture is the final end-all, be-all form of DNA, which would be in a coiled or condensed form. Notice how we went from a chromatin non-condensed interphase form all the way up to a coil and condensed sort of metaphase form. This is sort of the path of DNA packaging and the life of DNA in terms of how it's packaged. This is going to play a crucial, crucial role when we look at gene expression. Now that we understand that DNA can be packaged in these different ways, this is going to play a major role in how we're going to regulate the DNA itself. Because again, right now we're trying to see if we're going to express or not express some genes. The chromosome structure, which is basically the way DNA is packaged, is going to directly influence the way that we express genes. How so? Well, in terms of gene expression, we have two sort of scenarios. And again, we're looking mainly at the transcriptional level of gene regulation. So I'm going to focus on transcription in terms of gene expression. You can have two scenarios in which you have transcription and transcription only happens. So we'll say transcription only when the chromatin is in a very specific state. It, this transcription or the expression of the gene is only when chromatin um, is, let's say, accessible. 
Accessible is a good word here that we're going to focus on. It's accessible. And we should think about what we're being accessible to, which we'll get to um, in a later video. We can term this chromatin euchromatin or true chromatin. Chromatin that is essentially defined as loosely packed, thus it's accessible, right? You can have enzymes that need to access it and those enzymes can easily get to it because it's in a loosely packed um, state in which there are sites uh, available of active genes. Loosely packed sites of active genes. So the genes are out and about. They're readily, uh, they're readily available for something to come along and try to express them. So this is the yes, expression, go ahead, transcription, go ahead. This is basically the on switch of chromosome structure when we have this euchromatin form. We can sort of contrast this idea by stating that what if we have a situation in which the, the chromatin or the chromosome structure is too condensed. So we can state that if it's too condensed, we have a different scenario in this situation. There's actually not going to be any transcription because it's just simply too tight. The packaging is too tight for anything to come in and try to access it. This is going to be termed heterochromatin and it's contrasting to what we've established already with the term euchromatin. Now we have heterochromatin. This is going to be chromatin that is always tightly coiled. Okay, And we have to obviously compare it to our euchromatin counterpart in just a second. Always tightly coiled. Look at the comparison. Euchromatin is different because it's loosely packed and these loosely packed regions of chromatin have sites that are uh, available for active genes to be um, touched upon by different enzymes that we'll get to. Heterochromatin on the other end is always tightly coiled, thus it's always tightly packaged in a way that it becomes very difficult for something to express the genes associated with the heterochromatin, thus there's no transcription. This is the on switch, this is the off switch in terms of chromosome structure. Either you are accessible because you are loosely packed, or you are inaccessible because you are too condensed, too tightly packed, and thus no transcription is possible. A very good example of this that ties in directly to something we've already learned is a bar body. We know back from our chromosomes lecture that bar bodies are this inactivated X chromosome. Now you wonder, and you should understand, that why is there an inactivation here? What causes this inactivation? This is inactivation is directly due to the fact that there is no transcription possible on the bar body of that inactive X chromosome. Remember how females have two X chromosomes and we wondered, well, wh why don't females have double the amount of genetic information because they have those two X chromosomes? Well, one of them will be so tightly condensed and so tightly packaged through this heterochromatin structure because of this gene expression, this gene regulation that causes no transcription in this very tightly packed um, X chromosome. Notice how the other X chromosome is a little more open. I can come in with an RNA polymerase, let's say, and sort of do a transcription, translation. All these things can happen. This is too tightly packed, too wound up, and thus there's no transcription. Great, great example of the inactivation and thus no transcription associated with heterochromatin. So this gives us a good overall understanding of what chromosome structure is, what the on and off structures are based off of the way that DNA is packaged, thus the way that chromosomes are structured. These are sort of synonymous terms, just one is more encompassing than the other. We can work off of this knowledge in the next video and look at specific examples of this chromosomal structural modifications associated with, of course, you always got to remember our big topic, gene regulation. These are on and off switches, but there are specific, more specific on and off switches that will allow for transcription or not allow for transcription based off of this idea of packaging and structure that we'll look at in the next video.